Welcome to another episode of Beautiful, Bad and Bizarre. Today we're at Compton Cemetery to visit the final resting place of the wonderful character actress Patricia Hayes. Patricia Lawler Hayes was born on the 22nd of December 1909 in Streatham, London. Her mother, Florence, was a teacher and father, George, was a civil servant. George had moved to London from County Cork in Ireland and Florence was born in London of Irish parents. Patricia was their first child and it seemed she would not survive. Florence was unable to breastfeed her new baby and Patricia could not tolerate cow's milk. It was a fraught life or death situation. Situation when Patricia was taken back to the nursing home where she'd been born. Florence left her three-month-old baby with nursing staff under whose care Patricia began to thrive. It wasn't until 1911 when her sister Moira was born that Patricia Hayes would return to live with her parents. The early separation, according to Patricia's daughter many years later, affected Patricia for the rest of her life. Although they loved each other deeply, Patricia would have a difficult relationship with her mother. Florence's own mother had died when she was just one year old and Florence was placed in the care of an uncle and an aunt. The aunt was less than loving towards Florence and it was thought that this may have contributed along with the separation to the difficulties between Patricia and her mother. Patricia's brother Brian was born in April 1912 and during this early period the whole family would often find themselves unwell with the childhood diseases of the day including a severe case of scarlet fever. One thing that Florence was able to control and was extremely good at was giving her children the best education possible. Being a teacher, as soon as Patricia was able to talk, she was taught nursery rhymes and at three years old, Florence enrolled Patricia into preschool and in no time at all, Patricia was reading fluently. Although George and Florence were not a considerably wealthy couple, they were both working and their priority in life was to pull their resources to privately educate their children. The couple managed to provide holidays by the seaside. They permanently rented a flat on the seafront in Little Hampton in West Sussex. Patricia and her siblings began dancing and elocution lessons from a very early age and her teacher Olive Richardson immediately identified Patricia's potential, fully confident that her six-year-old pupil had star quality and would go far. Patricia would study with Olive for many years and would win all the talent contests which were held at the seaside resorts during the summer months. The money Patricia won was placed in a savings account for her. When Patricia Hayes was 11, she was spotted at Olive Richardson's school by the famous actor and entrepreneur J.B. Fagan. Fagan hired her to play a little girl in his production of The Great Big World at the Court Theatre in London. She was to play the part of Molly, the only girl in a family of boys. When the character of Molly appeared as an adult in the third act, Patricia was then given the part of Molly's five-year-old son, Mark, possibly the start of Patricia's famous reputation for playing boys that continued long into her professional career. Patricia Hayes was sent to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, known as RADA, while also attending regular school. She would go to school in the morning and RADA classes in the afternoon. She did this for a year until her father told her she must concentrate on her academic studies, so for the following two years she went to regular school only. Having passed all her exams at school, Patricia Hayes returned to RADA full-time and she was soon to be awarded the much-coveted Bancroft Gold Medal for acting in 1928 at the age of 19. Because she was so petite and considered plain in appearance and shy, Patricia Hayes found it difficult to make a significant mark in the theatre at that time. However, after Patricia won the Bancroft Award, the BBC asked her to read a story on their radio programme Children's Hour, which aired weeknights from 5pm till 6pm. Patricia would eventually become a regular at the BBC microphone after her first successful broadcast. She was frequently playing male roles. She would later find fame playing the male role in the 1943 schoolboy detective series Norman and Henry Bones, opposite Charles Hawtrey, who played Norman and Patricia played Henry. 
Patricia Hayes was offered a 10-week season in rep with JB Fagan's Oxford Players and this enabled her to gain more valuable experience. Although Patricia felt uncomfortable when trying to secure work, she said that she could sell almost anything she believed in, except herself. In her book, A Funny Old Life, I'll leave details in the description of this video, she wrote, Unfortunately, your own attitude affects other people's feelings towards you. If you lack confidence in yourself, so will others. Patricia Hayes often felt that she got the parts that other people could not or would not do. In the late 1930s, Patricia Hayes married fellow actor Valentine Brooke, and in 1939 the couple moved to Luxembourg, as Valentine had secured a job as an announcer with Radio Luxembourg. But shortly after the couple arrived, Patricia was offered a part in a West End play, and so despite being pregnant with their first child, Valentine encouraged a very excited Patricia to take the part and they returned to England, which was rather fortunate as they'd just returned home, World War II was declared. In 1940, heavily pregnant with her first child, Patricia had moved to a basement flat in Arundel Terrace, Brighton, and would commute to London frequently for any radio work she was offered, returning late at night during blackout. In fact, Patricia went into labour on a train, but fortunately arrived at a hospital on time to give birth to her son Richard on the 7th of March 1940. Richard became the actor Richard O'Callaghan. Despite being a new mother, during the war Patricia continued to work frequently, which included making two films, Went the Day Well with Leslie Banks and Great Day with Eric Portman. It was during the making of Great Day, which was released in 1945, that Patricia was complaining about having to wait for days on end before being able to perform her role in the film. She just wanted to go home to her children, son Richard and now daughter Teresa. Lance Comfort, the director, told her, You should never complain. You're one of those fortunate women who have the best of both worlds. Not many women can be married with children and also have an interesting and exciting career. Don't grumble. You are very lucky. With war over, Valentine, who'd enlisted in the army, had returned home, but he and Patricia were having difficulties settling back into married life. Valentine decided to apply for a job with the army, working for the control commission in Germany. Having got the job, he soon rekindled an old affair with an ex-fiancé who was now living in Germany. Patricia, who'd remained faithful to Valentine throughout their marriage, received a letter from her husband telling her that he was leaving her and the children to be with his ex-fiancé. However, he returned to England and Patricia and Valentine had a reconciliation. But it didn't work out. This time, when he left Patricia... He left her pregnant with their third child, their daughter, who she would name Gemma. Patricia had moved back to Brighton with her children from the village of Washington in West Sussex. A devastatingly unhappy Patricia squared her shoulders and drew on her courage and her Catholic faith. She never married again, but she did everything in her power to give her children a happy and loving home. It now became even more vitally important for Patricia to work and earn the money she needed to provide for her children. Pat Dixon, who was the head of Light Entertainment at the BBC, offered Patricia broadcast sketches playing to live audiences. Patricia signed a 14-week contract. In 1948, she moved her family to Wandsworth in London to be nearer the schools that she wanted them to attend and also so that she could work in London. Patricia Hayes' career took off after being cast as a supporting character in Ted Ray's comedy series Raise a Laugh in 1949. It was a six-week contract, but Patricia stayed with the show for over five and a half years. During her time on the show, she played a variety of roles, including Ray's secretary, Gertrude Dobbs, and his cleaning lady, Mrs Chatsworth. Patricia was to later recall... At the time, my marriage had broken down and I had three children to bring up. During the years I worked with Ted, I was never out of the house for more than half a day a week. In 1952, Patricia played the part of another schoolboy called Ginger in the series Just William. Her friend and colleague, Ted Ray's son, Andrew Ray, played the title role of the troublemaker William Brown. 
During the 1950s and 60s, Patricia Hayes appeared on television with all of the major British comedians of the day, including Arthur Askey, Alfie Bass, Sid James and Benny Hill, just to mention a tiny few. In 1958, Patricia began working with the comedian Tony Hancock in The Prize Money. She played a minor role as one of Hancock's friends who tries to steal the cash that Hancock has won from Sid James in a TV quiz. Due to her outstanding performance, a recurring role was created for her. In 1969, she appeared in Carry On Again Doctor as Mrs Beasley. Patricia's role as a supporting character actress went from strength to strength and in the late 1960s she had been appearing on the comedy series Till Death Us Do Part and by 1975 she was cast as a regular working alongside Dandy Nichols, Alfie Bass and Warren Mitchell who played the dreadful Alf Garnet. Ironically, Patricia Hayes' greatest success did not come from the comedy genre during her lengthy career. It was her starring role in the BBC television play for today in 1971 that won Patricia Hayes both the Society of Film and Television Arts Award and the Sun Newspaper Award for Best Actress for her portrayal of an alcoholic in Edna the Inebriate Woman. For over 70 years, Patricia Hayes was prolific on stage, radio, television and film. Her credits are simply too many to mention in this video, but in later years, she also appeared in productions for the Royal Shakespeare Company and her film roles ranged from Nicholas Nickleby in 1947 to A Fish Called Wanda in 1989. Patricia Hayes sadly died at 5pm on Saturday the 19th of September 1998 in a nursing home in Putnam, Surrey, where she'd been ill for some time. She passed away surrounded by her loving family. Patricia was 88 years old. Patricia Hayes was a petite woman with a giant amount of vitality and charm and her Cockney characters were wildly popular. She once said, I am exceptionally lucky in that I find I get happier and happier as I get older and older. My character was formed by my Catholic faith and the love of my life was my father. Patricia Hayes was awarded an OBE for her services to theatre in 1987. Patricia loved being presented to the Queen and on receiving the award she said I am enormously proud but it is not I who should be receiving it. The person who should have this award is my father George Frederick Hayes who spent all his life enduring a really boring job in order that I should be able to have my career. When she passed away, Patricia Hayes was also the serving chairwoman of the Catholic Stage Guild. In loving memory of Patricia Hayes, OBE, actress, mother, grandmother, friend, 1909 to 1998, rest in peace. so much for joining me today in this step back in time to remember the life of the wonderful Patricia Hayes. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.